Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking through the first part of Brad Westfall's really excellent series of tutorials on getting the most out of React and Friends. I'll have a link in the description below, of course, to his tutorials, to the corresponding repo on GitHub, and so on. Shout out to Brad for making this really excellent material, and to Facebook, of course, for making React the great and useful tool that it is today. So I'm going to presume that you're at least a little familiar with React, what it is and why people use it. So we're going to kind of glaze over that, but I will at least give you the one phrase summary that React's own website uses, that it's a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. You get a lot of components feeding data back and forth to each other, displaying it on screen, and taking user interactions. So that's the context that we're going in with. A lot of tutorials that you've probably gone through and that I've gone through give you that basic idea of how to make a component and get it to display on screen, but how those all fit together to make a full-on app is still a little mysterious. What goes into what goes into that is the goal of this series, and it's more about that than like what is the syntax, for example. These videos are about the forest rather than the trees. So let's start with kind of a high-level overview of, what sh of each piece of the app, starting with the most logical page, index.html. It's the home page, and it holds the div that will ultimately have the whole application appended to it. In this case, it's this root. So how does, how does this, if someone loads index.html, how does root get the context? Right now, if you just look at it, there's nothing in it. So check the app.js file, and in particular, line 8, which has the render function, it renders something called router. And you can see this JavaScripty document dot get element by ID root, right? So whatever router is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go on this root element here. So it renders something called router. What is that, and where does it come from? We see that here it's coming from a file in the same directory which takes us to router.js, which is over here. Now, this is starting to look like there's more going on and we need to take a look at, at each bit. Router.js holds the definitions for what components should be rendered when the user navigates to a particular root. And pay close attention because I'm going to be saying root I'm going to be saying root, and I'm going to be saying root, and potentially all meaning different things. Root, <laughs> either the root of the website, so the home page, or the root, meaning the path, or, <laughs> or even potentially this div. There's just no telling. So you have to, <laughs> you have to be aware of the context that I'm saying root in to figure out, but it, because it could be, potentially be a lot of things. But anyways, root.js holds the definitions for what components should be rendered when the user navigates to a particular route. What's nice about that is, besides the fact that you get all of, all of these routes in one place, you can also make nested routes like users slash ID by nesting them within each other in router.js. The route definition has a couple things in it. First is the name of the path, and the second is which component should get rendered. So for example, if you go to the root root, believe it or not, I just said that, if you go to the root root, you get the home component, right? And so on, users, widgets, and so on. Now, by the way, where, where do these components come from, right? Component home, component search lab, component users list. Where do these come from? And that's up here. That's that's up here at the top. And you know, it says import X component from Y directory. Import home from components home. Import users list from components users list. Import main layout from components main layout. And here's like main layout, for example, right? So this is and this is like the HTML that you ultimately end up with. So you'll see that everything in the roots are, you know, each of these components, each of those are imported from elsewhere. So before we go on, let's take a look at what the site looks like when it's done. So here's the home. If you click on users, you get 
a list of users. If you click on widgets, you get list of elements. The other cool thing is like, of course, you can click on the links that show up and you get all that, right? You get the, the user show page, if you will, right? So now you've seen, it's a pretty basic website, of course, we're only on tutorial one of three. So this one is just about like, what is the architecture to get just a basic site going? So you will, so, so let's go into that. Like, what does it actually take, you know, to get a site to function? So you'll note in RouterJS that regardless of the path, all the routes are going to be rendered well, they're going to be rendering the main layout component, which has a couple things. So slide over here to main layout, check this out. By the way, you should absolutely clone the repo, start up a gulp server and so on. And so you can be playing along with this yourself as you're following along in the video. So the, so the, the main layout component uh, has a couple things. The first is a navigation menu on the side which is right here, of course. The second block down here, it has a, well, it basically just says to, it, this, this contains whatever this.props.children is. And what that means is that depending on which URL you're visiting, that determines what will be rendered here. And so if you're at the root, you'll see the home component. If you're at slash users, then the user list will be shown and so on, right? Home, users list, uh, widget list, what have you. Now going off our intuition that depending on the root you get a different child component, that brings us to three more files, right? Home.js, userList.js, and widgetList.js. Home.js is easily the most straightforward. This is a basic React component and it returns for you a block of HTML. Nothing mind blowing here. User list.js is similar but add, adds links to other places on the site. In particular, you can see these links here, link to, right? In particular, the path user slash ID gets accessed via these links. So the thing to highlight here is, is that link to, that's the very important like thing to be note to be noting here, you know, you click on, you click on this link and where does that take you to? Where does it take you to? To the user slash ID path, which in turn renders the user profile component, which you can see here, right? So nested within users is slash users ID and it goes to user profile, which is right here. Now you'll notice here that when you click on when you click on that, when you render that component, you have access to the ID that's up here, right? And regardless of what you have, it's going to be able to, it's going to show up here, right? How do you get access to that URL param? And by the way, this is, this is a very important question throughout web development because regardless of your framework, regardless of what tool, what framework, what language you're using, you know, the information that renders on the screen is going to be using the same template regardless platform agnostic it's params agnostic but what particular id gets passed informs the actual content that you see and so how do we know that this given piece of the url is the particular param that you can see in the router file it's called user id here and that's how the path is defined in the first place so React is just going to know that what you pass right after users, that value is going to be associated with the key user ID. And so when you're writing your definition for user profile, you can interpolate this.props.params user ID, and that'll give you what you had up here. It's really nice. So that's about all there is for the first third of the tutorial. I hope you found that pretty straightforward to understand. The subsequent tutorials are much more complex because they build out the features, but this one is also very important because it gives you the basic structure of how everything fits together and so on. So I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you all in the next one.